So today I am going to be talking about um, a certain special opening. Uh, I'm going to talk about the opening I used in the 2015 Creative Invitational against Colossus. And the first thing you'll notice is that I really, really messed up early a little bit. Oh, what is this? I swear every time I like, I, I deliberately. <laughs> set my dashboard on Twitch to not do that, but then it did that anyway. <sighs> anyway. So, the opening I'm going to talk about is... Uh, actually, in our game it was like this, I guess. Um, and in this opening, I'm going to talk about a special strategy oriented around this Far Knight's approach. And this opening is particularly for black and only and really only with the two star points. You could try it with other variations, but I'm gonna really just be talking about this setup. Um, so in this opening, Black plays a far approach because he wants to split the left hand side. Uh, the idea is that Black wants to move around the board more quickly, and so if he can settle on the left hand side easily, then it becomes a very simple opening for him and he can just cover more space. Um, so in the so the most expected response is this pincer, right? It adds pressure on these two stones and it makes a nice extension from white's 4-4 point. But we're going to be looking at a particular counterplay to this. Um, in this, you could, for example, jump here, uh, threatening to play at f16 next. Um, but since white hasn't really invested much on the top, this kind of move isn't that um, big, and it's not that threatening. So instead, we're going to be looking at c6. This move is aiming to make a kind of um, sabaki strategy. It's aiming to take away the points of white and try to, like, in part, in part since you're trying to play faster, it's aiming to take away the options white has. Um, I'll first go over the variations that you'll probably see are most common. Uh, in my game against Colossus, he kicked here, and this is probably the most common response you'll see until you hit uh, maybe 5 or 6 done, where people will stop <laughs> trying to be all attacking oriented and actually consider the rest of the board. Um, nothing against Colossus, but I see this kick a lot, and it's not that great a move. Anyway, so after this kick, uh, white has two options. In our game, white played here. I misplayed this. Um, black should invade here and white plays down. White has some other options and we'll go over them, but I'll go over the main line that I messed up first. In our game, I actually went to e2, which is a mistake. I uh, played... I, I, did, I don't know this corner just like e2 too well, but um, I have since researched it pretty well. Um, and so actually black should play here, and after white connects, black has a couple options. Black can either push at e f3, or play at f2. Um, in this case, either seems plausible. I think I would prefer f3 a little bit, but I'll go over the f2 version, variation first. White can push here, uh, black has to defend the cut, white jumps, and then black take, lives in the corner. And you can see that even though black white has this wall here, um, having these two stones and the, the, uh, helps mitigate any attack white can use this wall against these two stones up here. For example, white could try a leaning attack on black, or actually maybe here is more severe, right? White's trying to aim to take the top, and this kind of attack is actually fairly severe because after this, white gets a very nice approach and has developed the top pretty well. But actually, white can have a counter, or black has a counter strategy to this kind of shoulder hit. Uh, black can attach here. Of course, if white pushes down, black can just take the stone. Um, but now this wall has no base, so actually black can follow up on this. Let's say white defends here by putting pressure against white stones. So it's actually not so great for white. That's why you might see white back off here. But then after black plays this, if white pushes. Um, black can actually push up here, and after this exchange, sorry, white will cut this way to isolate the two stones. Black can play up, threatening to net uh, the three stones, like 
three stones, so white has to get out. Or play something out, outward. Maybe here. But then black can make shape. And you notice that the original attachment D9 is in a very good place. Now if white tries to exploit the weakness at D10, uh, black can make a very nice tiger's mouth shape. Um, there's actually a lot of variations here, but they all emphasize the same thing. White could also shoulder hit from the other direction, but the idea is the same. Instead of responding immediately, black will play here. If white cuts, black is happy to take the stone, and even this stone still has a lot of aji, right? Later on, black could play um, this hane. If there's potential to run into the center, this hane is still uh, pretty valuable. Um, so white might back off. Block defense, push, block, push. And this cut is a possible continuation. White again has to defend this um, net. It's not clear what the best way is, but at this point, uh, white, black lives on white side. These three stones are still um, able to run out and make life. White probably won't defend here, but instead, either you know, securing these stones and black runs into the center. Uh, white could approach here and black will probably back off. Even if white develops the top, this Atari is very big later because it's threatening not just the corner but this stone and the follow-up is this stone. And this, these three or four stones all have a lot of um, Aji left in them. And in fact, you can notice that because of this exchange uh, from the kick, Black later could follow up by um, either pressing to force white to connect under or descending if black is strong enough in the center to attack both groups. So this is um, probably just one line. The main idea though is using this stone at c6 as a way to make sabaki with these two and not responding immediately to any um, type of attack. White could also attack loosely like this. But it's pretty clear that these two stones are helpful in mitigating the attack. Um, there was another variation here that I could have gone over. Instead of con instead of um, playing here, black can also push. Um, white then has options of how to continue, usually Hane. And then white will cut. Black uh, defends, white takes. Black Ataris. And then black can tenuki, but this group can come under a little bit of attack in K3, so usually black will push. White will defend somehow. But then we notice that, you know, it feels like white's invested a lot of stones here, and these two stones are still have a lot of aji. They can run out here, or black can try to make some sort of sabaki with attaching if he settles these two stones. <coughs> it's um pretty difficult for white, and black can also just take a large point, and it's clear that Black is moving around the board much faster than white. Um, so we discussed this one space jump uh, variation. There's not really any other options here. If black plays here, white can just push. Um, yeah, just push maybe. It's difficult to figure out how to defend. Or black can also block. White has to come back here anyway. Otherwise this um, push at E4 is really damaging. So there's not really much choice, and e4 is really the only move for white here. Uh, okay, so instead of f3, f4, you might think, okay, what if white plays f3? But uh, the situation is not that different. White can, black actually has a very nice combination with this uh, attach and cut. White can play here, um, and in this case, black hanes first. Uh, white plays here to deny black the Atari. And the Jolisaki is actually for black to connect at b6, locally anyway. Um, and then white would defend, and then black goes here. And white usually defends, and then black you know, runs out and makes shape. But actually, black also can play this move at b7. Even if white Atari's, <coughs> um, there's still this cut at c4. Uh, this cut here that white has to worry about, so white has to defend this somehow, usually by backing off here. But then we notice, oh, black stones are all linked up on the left. There's still a lot of Aji here. Um, black can pull a stone out at E5 later. So this is a pretty big success for black. And white's corner is not that big. It's only 
maybe 12 points, and there's still Aji. Black side alone is nearly 12 points, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yeah, 12, maybe 14 or 16 points. So, and it's pretty, um, Black has a small, maybe 5, 10 point lead this way, so it's pretty easy opening for Black. Um, so what if, instead of kicking, White just backs off? Uh, the variation, the same idea uh, applies. Black just takes a corner and is just using the C6 stone kind of as a sacrifice to help the two stones above later. Um, black might play like this. If white tries to attack these, black still has his attachment. Um, pretty easy. Uh, white can also approach this way, but still you just attach back off, block, and you can push up. Um, usually the side. You know, if you back off, then this is even better for black, right? You get to break in, and these stones are not completely dead yet. This stone can still be pulled out. Black has a lot of aims here. Um, it's a pretty nice opening. I really enjoy playing with it. Uh, there is, you know, some other variations you can play. Uh, what if white plays a large nice move? Black can still take the corner. And in this case, it's important not to play e3, because then white will hunt it on the inside. But actually you can get a nice move with f2. If black blocks here, white blocks here, then you can just make this exchange and push out. Um, white can hunt it, but then this cut is a little bit difficult. White has to defend. You have some peeps here. You have, you can take sente. You know, a lot of options. Um, so what if white blocks down at g2? Uh, then black just pushes up. Han is, and this cut is very severe because the corner is solid, so now these two stones are in danger. Um, it's a little bit difficult too because this stone can be pulled out, and c9 isn't at c8, so the Aji is much more difficult for white to handle uh, later if black gets this move. You know, in combination, it becomes more difficult to handle this cut. Um, so there's a lot of things for black to aim at in this shape. Uh, so instead of this, White might hunt it on the inside, black blocks. Whoops, not there. This was, um, you know, preventing the hunt here re reduces the impact, uh, reduces what black can do with c6 because before this clamp was annoying, now it's farther away. Black can't aim at that, but black has a very nice attachment here at h3. If white descends, black can continue descending. White can't descend any further, or black will cut, right, and capture white. So white has to connect. Black can escape back to the side, make solid points. This wall, because this stone is a little far, <coughs> is still difficult to use. And it feels like black has maneuvered very nicely through the opening. Okay, so, actually, the best way to handle this kind of two-space pincer, um, one consideration might be actually be instead of playing c9 to pressure black, is to back off directly at f3. Now if black plays elsewhere, when you pincer at c9, um, black can't really come in. White will just enlarge and threaten both sides any immediately. So you don't, black doesn't have the time to make sabaki here like this. Whoops, not there. Um, right? If this happens, then even if white, black starts running out, white will turn his, his attention to attacking these two stones. And there's not um, this attachment or sabaki options for black in that case. Uh, so instead of playing elsewhere, black should defend uh, against this pincer and the moya that white's threatening, and then white can play elsewhere to develop the rest of the board. Um, this is probably somewhat even, but it feels like black really broke up white's left hand side, so white it's difficult for white to make any kind of moyo type of strategy. Uh, so I don't know if this is the best way for white to play. Actually, what I think um, probably is most interesting for white uh, is to approach here immediately. Then if you can get these exchanges, uh, you know, black might play r6 to take sente, and then you have um, this tenuki joseki in the upper left. And at this point, white can just back off um, at c12, or white can turn here first. If you turn, it's pretty simple. Uh, the Josaki goes like this, and it's 
is Black's move. Black's move is outweighed by Komi. And if you look at the board, the board is pretty cleanly divided in half, so it seems pretty even and pretty easy to play. Uh, white can also play here. Black will definitely push um, to, to capitalize on white uh, having Tenneke. Uh White might Hana, but actually white can... Um, Black will make this exchange so that B16 is Sente later. But after this shape, again, it's Black's turn, but the board is pretty evenly divided in half. Black might have a small edge. Uh, but, you know, why has called me? Black is the next move. It's pretty even. I think this is um, a more reasonable or easy way to play for white. Um, and I think it's definitely a better choice than defending immediately. Uh, white could also pincer immediately. I don't think this variation is particularly good for white, though. If you follow the normal Joseki. Um... After this, black can immediately approach a c6, and the idea is the same. Black is trying to break up white's framework and make it hard for white to use his stones together. <coughs> and if you look at the board, even just now, black has three corners, and white just has one, and this group, of, this wall here is not so easy to use. Uh, if white pincers, black won't take the corner or double approach immediately, black will attach. The aim is to make um, white over-concentrated here. Uh, if you just back off, you play a normal Joseki. At this point, it's kind of difficult for uh, for white. Like, if you, de if you defend the corner, then black will cut. Your best option here is actually to play like this. Um, now that black can't get an eye, but it's pretty uh, simple for black to just jump out. And white hasn't really made too many points here, maybe 15, and the bottom is still just a corner. But black has two corners and the rest of the board to de develop on, whereas white can only really develop on the bottom. And it's from a low knight's move, so it's pretty difficult for white, I think. Um, oh, hey! I haven't been looking at the chat at all. I'm sorry. Loving this review. Can I see Joseph? <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sorry. I wasn't looking at the chat at all. I have my viewer thing up, so I thought I was the only one here, so I was just kind of going through it and thought people would watch it on YouTube later. Let me uh, go through these questions really quick. Because that was, that, that was pretty much the last variation I had anyway. Um, there's, there, there's one more variation where white just backs off here, and then black will double approach, and this exchange is good for white since it makes white over-concentrated here. What are you guys talking about? It's 7.33. Your comments were at 724. Okay. Um, isn't G4 better than G3? G4. G4? What was I looking at? I had G4. Or G3. Let me. So the original variation is like this. <laughs> Sorry, monk. Um, okay, isn't G4 better than G or F4 instead of F3, the Joseki after the kick? Um, F4 and F3 are both possible. I talked about F4 at the beginning, um, but in both cases, these aren't very good for white. Yeah, yeah, I got that. Um, so in this case, white can play at C3, and this is actually what happened in my game with Colossus, but I really messed it up. Uh, because after black, white descends at b5, black should peep at uh, e3. In the game I played e2, and this really messed me up when Colossus played f2. But the Joseki is actually for black to play e3. Um, and since you weren't here, I'll go over it quickly. After white connect, white can't really do anything but connect at e4. Uh, for example, if white pushes, um, this push is kind of difficult for... Uh, white to deal with. Even if you take these stones, you'll lose the stones on the left and the corner, so it's pretty good for black. Um, the ex black doesn't really mind making this exchange. Um, so you basically always connect here. E2, that, then white is at F3 though, right? E2... E2? Ah, yeah, if you play E2, then white will play F3. Uh, white can play f2 or f3. Um, they're both possible. They just have slightly different meanings. Um, but the Joseph, it's it's actually better for black to play e3 when you have this descent to b5. 
if this if there wasn't a kick exchange, then it's better to then you can play e2 and it's okay. So um after white connects, black can either run out at f3 and this emphasizes the side more, or black can play f2, and both are possible. Uh, okay. Uh, if you play f2, white will probably make this exchange and then run out, and then black has to add a move to live. And in this case, um, it's difficult for white to really use his thickness, even though this group is kind of weak. For example, if you try to um, cap, black can make Zabaki by attaching here. And if you do something even more severe, like shoulder hit, black can still ignore it and attach. Even if you split, um, black's pretty happy to just make shape here. There's still a lot of Aji in the C14 stone, such as the Hana at B13 and such. Um, yep. Yeah. So, this is the uh, the line that I should have played with Colossius. Uh, the, the other variation besides F2 is to run out of F3, and White will push in Hana, and after this, White has to take the stone. But then black can run up, and usually h4 is pretty good because it limits the effectiveness of the influence and develops the right hand side. Uh, black could also play elsewhere, but um, there is a possibility of a counterattack against this group, like at k3. Yeah. So, and if you look on the board, it feels like uh, maybe this corner is split in half ish, but these black still has two corners, and black can develop a lot more than white. White at this point can only really develop along the top, whereas black can develop along the bottom, the side, and the top. So I, it seems favorable to black. And this was the kind of opening I was going for against Colossius. Um, actually, I don't think this kick is very good. I think just backing off is better. But either way, I feel like the variation is kind of favorable to black. Um, the exchange white should play is actually just approaching, not playing on the left. Uh, black is actually trying to bait white to play on the left more, to um, make white over overcommit on the left. And after black backs off, uh, white slides. Then, um, or sorry, this, this exchange is earlier. If you play it now, uh, it's possible to play it now, but it feels like after this, then black will just approach here, or take the top maybe. But even just approaching here is fine. Um, black's moyo on the left is about the same as the white's framework on the bottom. Or black's, yeah, this is still not completely solid, but black's territory on the left is about the same as white's on the bottom, but if you compare black on the right to white on the upper left, it's clear black has more. <coughs> What white would probably h2 rather than b3, no? h2 rather than b3. h2. Oh, and, and way back in the other line. Sorry, I'm, I'm going kind of fast, and the delay is not helping. So I'm guessing you meant in this line somewhere. Probably this one. White would probably h2 rather than b3. Oh, I see. Uh, so after this or uh, here. Playing h2 here. Um, you don't see this much. My guess is actually black uh, might Atari this way and then connect. Even if white captures the stone after black lives, what black has a ladder breaker still. Um, or maybe just connect directly. Actually, maybe taking the stone isn't so bad either. Um, I've never seen this much, but black gets sente after this, so black could run out with this group. And white will only have two corners, white can no longer develop anywhere. Or black could um, put pressure and take uh, put pressure on the top to take the top side. I don't, this doesn't seem so bad for black. Even just taking a sunrense with this ponoki here is pretty strong. Um, there's still a lot of Aji for these guys to run, but maybe that sacrifice is too big. So instead, hmm, maybe Atari and then connect. Then this um, uh, this move is Sente, and then Black can get this move in Sente as a ladder breaker, and then Black lives. 
It feels pretty good for black to me, if it's like this. White could try to go after the corner. Um, but black looks alive to me. Yeah, black's alive. So, the corner's still not dead yet. Uh, sometimes you play here, but in this case the Tessuji at C1 doesn't work. Um, even after these exchanges, black can still live. I just felt if black had that two stone wall, it looked too good. Ah, uh, then... Um, that's true. But, I mean, both, both ways are possible. I think both ways are still good for black, though. Um, especially if you can get this move as a ladder breaker in. It is a ladder breaker, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe white doesn't capture me. White tries to do something fancier. But, but in any case, after... If black doesn't need to spend a move here, which it looks like maybe he doesn't, the only thing you'd have to worry about is something like this. We even... blocking here... I guess he can make a co. Not, no, it's not a co. Uh, I guess it is. Why don't... You, if black tries to go after it right away, why can Hana here? And then after this, it dies. Um... So maybe, maybe black does add a move after white stops the ladder breaker. But even if, if black adds a move, it still feels like black has moved... Black took a corner. Black has a Sun Rensei formation. This corner is about the same as this corner. This is 9 points, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay, 10 points. So they're about the same, but Black's position on the right and development potential... You know, top and bottom is about the same, but the right is much better than the left for White. Yeah. Seems good. Um, was there another comment earlier? Can I see Jolisaki's if White pins is at C12 or D12? C12... Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that's kind of what I was talking about at the end. Um, so if white pincers at C12, black will just play C17. Uh, it's important here that white plays B17 first uh, in these Ataris. If white plays D15 first, then when white plays uh, B17, even though it's going, it looks like it'll turn into the same shape, black can actually cut here. And Buck's quite happy to get a strong shape here. Um, white still needs to protect the top, and then maybe develop here, but... Black, black can still turn and take the top, or Black can Tenuki. And Black shape is very good. And the other pincer was... Oh, so let me finish this Joseki. Um... So white Ataris, Ataris, and connects. Black will usually play b18. If white is strong at the top, though, black can also play f17. Uh, white will make this exchange, though. The reason for that is, say, if white has stones at the top, then sometimes white can um, take away black's eye with e18. Like this. So now d17 becomes a false eye, and black will be forced to play this exchange later. Uh, but this is only if white's pretty so usually you don't have to worry about it, and B18 is the better move, because it takes the corner. Uh, so after this, white has to defend. Uh, white white has a few options here. You, the most common is F15. Black will push up to pr make cuts and then defend. White has to play D14 or else these four stones will die. Um, if you Tenuki, for, well not there, but if you Tenuki, then black can cut here. Um, even if White Han is out, Black can just Atari... Uh, can he? I don't know. Let me see. Yeah, Black can Atari here first. Just Atari. If White's forced to live in Gote, it's pretty painful. And then Black can make shape, and these three stones are isolated. Uh, White can try to interpose some exchanges first. Does this move work? It doesn't seem like it works. This move doesn't work because of the ladder. Um... Yeah, so now it's really difficult for white. So instead of here, maybe just here, and then live. But these two stones can't really move, and white has a weak group in the center. Ah, and now this whole corner, white has only two points, so it's pretty good for black. Even though black shape isn't the best. Uh, there's other ways to take advantage of this, too. 
kind of depends, but this is the easiest way. You have to tell me how to play against Clausius. Uh, well, I don't want to say anything bad about Clausius because he's a pretty nice guy. <coughs> um, but I I don't know his his the way he plays is really kind of strange to me, or not strange, but it feels kind of strange. I don't know. Uh, another option for white is to make this exchange um, to limit black's development at the top, and then white just protects here. Uh, oh, so after this, after these, um, black can play elsewhere. You know, approach. Uh, white has some endgame Tessuji, or not endgame, but like middle-ish game Tessuji, like this Hane. Uh, black can take, and then these exchanges, white can get some thickness here. But it's um, usually not played too often, or not early, because there's a still a cutting point. And white will take Gote to make these exchanges, which is why black usually uh, takes Sente <coughs> at this point. Um, and then the other pincer you mentioned was D12. Okay, D12. What is D12? Uh, D12. Oh, this one? Oh, I don't really see this too often. Um, I presume black can still play the same Joseki in the corner. There's the, the slight difference here is that uh, now white, if white plays G16 and black pushes, normally if D12 is at D7, D, uh, is at C12, then pushing again would be Sente. But here it's not Sente because D13 is there is uh, covered by d12. You can imagine if this stone is here, if white played elsewhere, then black can play here and these five stones are dead. So that's the main difference. Uh, this happens occasionally. So usually when white plays here, black will push. And then um, white might take sente. Um, the other, black also has um, other options he can play. He can play d16. Um, this kind of move is a little bit more difficult though. Uh, so maybe if you back off, then it's white will have to defend the top. I don't really play it too often, but the idea is still the same. Then you just push white on top and then you counter pincer. It's almost the similar to most um, anti pincer Josakis. I don't know Dalin. How, tell me how, you, how to beat Dalin. Dal or not Dalin, Dalin? I still can't pronounce her name. Um, yeah, but attaching is probably fine. Uh, the one thing you have to worry about this is if white has a stone here, then attaching is not good. You have to play something like um, this this attachment instead. Uh, the reason for that is white doesn't have to Atari this way. White can Atari uh, this way instead. And then if black wants to capture white, uh, it's kind of difficult. Black and Atari here, and then black has to go this way. Otherwise, the two stones die. And white can run out here. Uh, black can push, but then if black tries to block, uh, white has a nice attachment here. Um, after this, white can connect under, and the K17 stone uh, saves white's stones, basically. You know, um, I don't know, just extend. Right? White's basically connected. You can push first, but it doesn't really change um, the connection for white. Uh, but the reason this push is important is because... So black could play here. Um, but then if black could push here, there's a ladder, right? If white had to respond, then black could... Well, black could just take the stone, too. Um, but... Uh, black doesn't have to respond to that. In, or white doesn't have to respond to this push in this case. But if, as I said before, if this stone is lower, now white has to respond to this push. If white just takes the stone, then black can kill these four. Um, and that's the major difference, right? So now if white has to respond, then black can play here and take the stone. And there's nothing, nothing really white can do about it. Or worse yet, if the ladder works for black, then it's a complete mess.
Um, so this is just one thing you have to worry about when facing the high pincer. But it's a little less common. And of course, you always want to adjust your play to like what you're facing against. So you know, if white had a big moyo on the on the bottom side, then black might consider you know reapproaching here or attaching underneath. There's all sorts of other moves, but these are the basic basic shapes. Yeah. All you need to beat Dolan is play something that challenges him to a whole board fight. Kia will not let Dolan back down. Whole whole board fight ensues. Dolan eventually overplays and dies horribly. Okay, I remember that. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, the best way I think to respond to this move is actually just approaching somewhere else. Um, and I think I covered most of the variations for this opening. Uh, if there are any other questions, I'll take them. Otherwise, I'll end this um, short lecture. And I will see you all next time if there's nothing else. Thank you. I'll just play through this while I'm waiting for the Twitch chat to catch up. You can't let me go 4-0 against you. Have we played? I think we played once before, Dolan. Are you 3-0 against me? I don't remember playing you that much, but maybe. Okay, seems like nothing new from Twitch chat. Um, okay, so this was a very short lecture on the opening, uh, specifically using this kind of really early invasion move. And I think it's really interesting to look at moves like these because <coughs> they kind of go against general opening principles. Your usual opening principle is defend your weak group or approach from the wider side, but sometimes, you know, there are these unexpected moves too. Um, yeah, I will definitely play against you later, Monk. Um, I have to go to my Go Club first, and then I'll be back maybe 10 ish. So, yeah. Really? I played you three times, Dallin? Uh, well, I guess I'll have to do better in the future. Okay, thanks for tuning in. Bye. If I can find. Okay.